Welcome to my dollar studio tour. Well, studio is sad a bit much, it's just a desk, but the title resembles most what you'll get, I think. Let's get started with a short overview. At first, we have my three pocket operators. The robot, tonic, and factory. Next to them comes the Moog Mini Tower, a fantastic synthesizer for bass. Beneath it resides the Arturio Microfreak, a more experimental synthesizer with lots and lots of possibilities to discover. On its left is the Cork NewTek NTS-1 in my custom-built Lego stand. The NTS-1 is a great and very versatile device. Primarily it's a synthesizer with some effects, but you can use it as an effects device as well. It's MIDI controllable and has an arpeggiator. Now we're coming to the heart of the setup, the 1010 Music Blue Box. It's a 6-channel stereo or 12-channel mono mixer. Besides mixing, you can record on it, which I'm currently not using, and it has delay and reverb effects built in as well as a compressor. In the top row is the Cork Walker Keys, a well-known synthesizer with which I didn't get along with in the first place. But we just needed more time together, and now I wouldn't give it away anymore. If you like the vibes Evangelis created in the first Blade Runner movie, this little box is for you. Finally, the groove box I started with, the Novation Circuit Tracks. Perfect gear for beginners in my opinion. Usable standalone or with other devices. Great on the go because of its low weight and has good battery life. A beginner friendly sequencer and good workflows. If the blue box is the heart of the setup, the next device is the brain. It's the Novation Launchpad Pro, a MIDI controller which I use for controlling four of my devices and as the BPM clock. Besides this, I created custom pages for controlling the blue box, which I don't use very often, and one for controlling the Koala sampler app on my smartphone. The last gear on this desk is the Zoom H5, which I use for recording all of this. I'm using it for over a year now for recording, so it's my established workflow and I'm not sure yet if I replace it with the recording capabilities of the blue box. This setup needs cables. A lot of cables. I won't go into detail about every one of it, but I want to give you a short summary. The 1010 Music Blue Box takes in a cable from every device I showed you before, except for the pocket operators. They're just wired when I need them, because I'm not using them that often. The output goes directly to the Zoom H5, which just records what comes out here without any adjustments. I haven't established any effects routing with it so far, because I don't own any effect devices besides the capabilities of the NTS-1. The USB cable acts as a power source for the Innovation Launchpad Pro and enables a MIDI connection between them. The Launchpad Pro has four tracks but just two MIDI outs, so I had to use a MIDI through box. One MIDI cable goes to the MIDI through box and from there every device is connected. I configured different MIDI channels for them and everything worked well. Maybe you ask yourself why I said there are four tracks on the Launchpad Pro, but there are five MIDI cables leaving the MIDI through box. The fifth cable goes to the Novation Circuit Tracks, although it's not controlled by the Launchpad Pro or not entirely. The connection is just there to easily get the BPM sync to the Circuit Tracks. Some few words on ideas of the setup and decisions I made. I chose the 1010 Music Blue Box because it has a good reputation, isn't very big, and since the faders are digital, it's possible to scale well with my setup. If you'll need to use stereo splitters to connect more than six devices, you just configure which audio channel is which track, and easily every mono channel gets its own fader. I learned to use sequences on the circuit tracks, and I really liked it a lot. In the beginning, the circuit tracks was the heart and brain of my setup, when I used a maximum of two external devices with it. As my setup grew a bit, I wished I could have the sequencer for more devices. Some months ago, I learned about the Launchpad Pro and its standalone features aside from controlling a door. And so I made the decision, when upgrading my setup, to make it the new controller. So for now it controls the Moog Mini Tower, Cork Volker Keys, Arturia Microfreak and the Cork NTS-1. The circuit tracks works on its own and just gets synced by the Launchpad Pro. Speaking of the circuit tracks, it's the least integrated device in this setup and that's on purpose. For now I could just unplug it and take it with me, use it on the go or on the sofa or whatever and the rest of the setup would still work. I made this decision because it's still a groove box and I like to take it with me because I can sketch complete tracks on it. This may change in the future because the circuit tracks is my backup controller enhancement. The Launchpad Pro controls already as much devices as it can. 
So if I'll ever get more devices that need to be controlled by MIDI, I could use the two MIDI tracks of the circuit tracks to do the job. Hence it wouldn't be so easy to take it out of the setup anymore. Some learnings and tiny drawbacks so far. Sometimes when I press the play button on the Launchpad Pro, the 1010 Music Blue Box takes over the BPM clock and the Launchpad Pro just says sync instead of controlling the tempo. Because of the MIDI via USB connection between the two devices. I couldn't switch this off so far. But it always helps to press the stop button on the blue box and press the play button on the Launchpad Pro. Another thing I learned is that the MIDI channels on the Launchpad Pro are set per project. First I changed the MIDI channels on the Launchpad Pro so they won't trigger the same channels on the circuit tracks. After I started a new project everything was back to default again. Because I didn't want to change channels every time I start a new project, I tried changing them on the circuit tracks and that was the better solution, because they stayed the same even after starting a new project. That's it so far. I hope you liked my little studio tour. If you've got any questions about the setup or you want to add something or want me to go more in depth on some detail, just leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Until next time.